What's going on with y'all? Welcome to HDTV. You're now rocking with your boy. <laughs> What's going on with y'all? Now, the game from Friday, um, I will do my review of yesterday's game, Mercury and Seattle Storm later with the Vegas and um, New York Liberty game today. I'll do that later. But I wanted to get this out. Um, the Las Vegas Aces against the Connecticut Sun. Even though the Connecticut Sun were winning, they just never felt like they had the game in control. You know how you watch and the team is winning and they're making their threes and each time down the stretch, they're just making shots, making shots, getting stops. But they're only up 10 or 5 or 12. And it just it just doesn't seem, in my opinion, scratch that. The Connecticut Sun, to me, they're a... They're a good, sorry-ass team. If that makes any sense, they're a good, sorry team. Now, what I mean is, is that they're they're good as far as they play their positions. Um, Melissa Thomas um, is amazing. I love Melissa Thomas. Dewana Bonner, when her shot is going, is good. Ty Harris, when her shot is going, she's good. Mabry has found a, a second life. Because she's on a team that has, you know, championship aspirations. The problem I have is down the stretch, it all just doesn't come together at the right time. Um, Chelsea Gray, um, Tiff Hayes, and Kelsey Plum kept this team afloat. Um, Jackie O made a couple good plays early on, but but down the stretch. Jackie O was kind of, you know, kind of disappearing. Um, Asia was was kind of just playing defense and getting the boards. Um, but this is why I don't count against the Las Vegas Aces. The Las Vegas Aces are a four-quarter team, a 40-minute team, right? 10 times four is what? 40. Got four quarters, 10 minutes. That's 40 minutes. They are a team that is... Just you could tell they have championship DNA. Um, New York Liberty having won a championship, but you can tell that they have they have a championship like team at how they play their games. The Las Vegas Aces, I think, in my opinion, they they love to pace themselves. You know, they're not trying to go all day, run the court, all day, fast break basketball. That that basketball is boring. They like to be methodical, slow it down, get to their spots, set screens. Kelsey Plum, they try to get Kelsey or Jackie to be hot. Kelsey Plum sometimes will run the point or to be um Jackie. Sometimes Asia will bring the ball up. You know, which, you know, which is good for them to do because it takes the pressure off of Chelsea, who doesn't have to dominate the ball all the time. Chelsea Gray is um, probably the best or greatest point guard to ever play the game. Um, you'll have people say Sue Bird. You'll have people say Swing Cash. You'll have people say Pancaro. It's a lot of names. Um, one of them days you might have LaCaitlin. LaCaitlin may be probably the best point guard ever. You you don't know. All of that stuff is coming down the line. Um, but this game showed you the poise down the stretch. Dejanae Carrington has got to work on a consistent three. She's got to work on her handles better. She's got to work on her offensive game. Um, if she wants to be a superstar. Now, if she wants to just be a solid starter, then she's cool at what she's doing. She just needs to work on her her three-point shooting. You know, she could be a 3 and D player, but I see her being a, a, she has the potential to be a superstar. Her defense, her tenacity, her motor. Outside of Asia um, and Angel Reese, as far as motor, Dejanay has a motor and Horston has a motor and so does De'Erica Hamby. They have a, more, a motor that goes for days. Now, I may be missing some other people 
Let me know in the comment section who you think has probably a high motor that plays in the WNBA. But the Connecticut Sun defensively, they're flawless. Um, Mabry hit some big shots down the stretch. Her and Dewana Bonner made some plays, but it's not enough. Dewana Bonner or Mabry, one of them is going to have to say, look, I'm going to take this over. Ty Harris had a great first half. Second half came, Ty Harris went pew, like no production. Um, they tried to go to their bench. I, I think the girl's name is Burke. Then they had Odata or Adato. She played for a little bit, but she wasn't effective. Um, she was like when the Aces had Gustafsson. Gustafsson need to get thrown off the team. How you show up for Chicago, but you don't show up for any other team. You show up for Chicago, but you don't show up for any other team. You know, it, it's terrible. You know, it's terrible fundamental basketball that's not being played at in situational. Well, I ain't going to say just fundamental. I'm going to say situational basketball. They're not they're not working everybody. They're not they're not pressing the aces. They didn't put pressure on the aces. Then when it was getting crunch time, Asia started to wake up. And you know when mother wake up, shout out to Auntie Sess. That's her word from that's her nickname from Asia Wilson mother. When she show up, it's over. You're done. Um, you're done. Her and Stewie are like two of the most like for bit for the for the for the four position, they're tough. They're gonna destroy you. Especially in the clutch. In the clutch, she played good. Now she did hurt her ankle at the end. Um Brianna Jones, big ass, rolled on it. But Brianna Jones, shout out to her. Brianna, Brianna Jones, listen, if the Connecticut Sun don't win this year and they decide to um Brianna Jones decides to leave, I could see Brianna Jones. I could see Brianna Jones going to play. Um, she might stay, but I could see her going to play with. Um, she could be good for the Atlanta Dream because Tina Charles. I don't know how long Tina Charles has left. She's the first ballot Hall of Famer whenever she retires. I think Brianna Jones would fit that ATL Dream team perfectly, um, or she can go to that Washington Mystics team. And you can move Aaliyah Edwards to the four full time. Because I think her and Dotson or Dotson, excuse me, they play between the five and the four. Shakira Austin's really the 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 the, the piece. And then they got um Eladon. They got Eladon who's a who's a who's a four two who who's a beast. She's a beast. I think she won back in 2018 or 17 with the with the Mystics. I might got it wrong, but she's a beast. And and if you could convince her to come back. Washington Miss is going to be a dangerous team next year. I would watch out for them. They might have a chance to win. Like, seriously. Because Eladon with Aaliyah Edwards, Shakira Austin, Ariel Atkins, Sykes, that will be dangerous. But to the game and stuff, the Connecticut Sun are having the same problem. It's closing down the stretch. Now, everybody's saying, well, Alyssa Thomas need to do this. Alyssa Thomas, fine. The problem is you're paying, you brought in this Mabry chick. And you brought in her. Mabry got to step up even more. Yes, yeah, she stepped up, made some baskets, but down the stretch as well, she got to she got to make some more baskets. Her, her, and Dewana Bonner have got to be the closers. If not them, Ty Harris is gonna have to wake up and be a closer. You got three potential people on your team that could be the closer. Brianna Jones is cool, but she's a solid starter. She's not a a, a person who's gonna take the game over. So, so you know you you know you got to look at that and take it with a grain of salt. Chelsea Gray hit dagger after dagger. Kelsey Plum hit dagger after dagger. It was a beautiful it was a beautiful and eloquently put game in the in the fourth quarter. Great play. Shout out to the Las Vegas Aces, man. They did their thing. Now. The Chicago Sky and the L.A. Sparks. Um, you have two teams. Um, one team is fighting to stay on to the eighth seed. Um, the other team is looking to um, just get better position. You know, they're a losing team, mainly not because of their talent. To me, it's because of their coach. Um, I believe Kurt Miller just doesn't get along with everybody. Now, the Chicago Sky, Kennedy... 
Ken Folk is back. Ken Folk back. <laughs> and we got to see the Sky Town Barbie for one last time. And she didn't disappoint. Um, I didn't make a video on it because I wanted to take the time to talk about her performance um, along with people don't understand how great this girl is. She broke the record for most rebounds she in the season. Um, she's broken. She has more rebounds damn near than anybody in their career. She's averaged the most rebounds of anybody. 13.1, I believe. More offensive rebounds, which is about four or five re offensive rebounds a game. She set records for the double-double record. She's had 26 in a season, with 29 being the most by Alyssa Thomas. She was going to break that. Um, she broke the most double-doubles for a rookie, which was 21. I think people, defensively, she was rated as one of the, she was rated as the best rookie of anybody in the class. She was in the top 25 or top 20 in defensive rating. That's great. In her first year, um, she went against the best and she held them under 31% or 35% the further they were away from the basket. Um, her three-point shooting was on and off this season, but when it was on, she was hitting. Um, she struggled to finish in the, in the, at the goal at the rim, but she kept getting better and better after the break. She kind of dipped. She hit that rookie wall, but she still was there to help her teammates. She still was rebounding 15 to 20 rebounds a game. That's unheard of. Um, and for her to be disrespected the way that she's been disrespected is um, downright diabolical, downright, how do I say it, downright despicable. And those who are disrespecting her, I hope something bad happens in your life. I hope something horrible happens in your life. And I know you're not supposed to wish that, but I wish it. I hope something bad happens to you guys. Because I don't think y'all ever been through loss. I don't think y'all ever been through being hated or torn down because of how you look, how you dress, how you are. I don't think you guys ever dealt with that. And one of these days, you're going to deal with something that hurts. And when it hurts, don't come to the Internet or come to us with your cries because we're going to be like Angel Reese went through a lot of that stuff. But y'all didn't give a damn about her. You know, I don't I don't want to hear it. I hope something happens in your life. For those who have been dissing and sending death threats to her and her family and others, I hope something happens to somebody around you so then you could feel what it feels like the vitriol of loss. I I don't wish nothing bad on anybody, but I, I'm hoping something happens to you guys. You guys have been disrespectful to a girl that isn't even a full grown woman. She's still a girl. Yeah, she's in her early 20s. She's still a girl. But y'all don't say anything else about this chump over here in Indiana who has shown nothing but people around her being racist and hateful. And, and she played one of the best games I've seen her play this season. Pick and roll was on point, hit a couple threes was dominating down at the boards. She got 21 points, 12 rebounds, had like four or five offensive rebounds. Her defense was incredible. Her uh, her leadership to, to big up Camilla like she did. Camilla had a lost confidence in herself. And you know what Angel did? Angel every day would stop by to talk to her. She would work with Camilla. She would tell Camilla Miller, you, 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 you that girl. Take over. Demand the ball. Demand getting it. She always put her teammates first. She always put the coaches first. She always sacrificed for everybody. And the thanks she get is a bunch of needle penis ass dudes on the internet. Punk ass dudes who wouldn't bust a grape or bust a watermelon in a fruit fight. Trying to say she's faking she hates Caitlyn. She hates this. Instead of y'all praising what this draft class has brought 
to the to the WNBA. Y'all want to praise one person like she's Jesus. Y'all don't ever want to praise anybody else because you guys have something psychologically messed up with you. And this goes for people who come to the page. If you disrespect this girl in the future by calling her out of her name, I am going to block you. If you come on here and you're not speaking about the game for real and you just blurting all these bum ass stats to me, I'm going to block you. You can call me soft or whatever. It ain't even about being soft, partner. I ain't soft. I'm far from it. It's about being respectable. I be respectable on this page. I don't wish death on Caitlyn. I don't wish hurtfulness on Caitlyn. I don't wish death on LeBron or hurtfulness from LeBron. Everything I critique them about is on the basketball court. Things I ask them to speak out about is about people around them because down the line, that will come back to bite you in the ass. If you don't check what is going on with your name right now, Caitlyn, this is why Angel Reese did what she did and give Caitlyn her flowers, did her podcast, because Angel is a fan of the game. She's a fan of everybody. But you wouldn't know that because on the internet, we spin all this conspiracy crap or this, I don't call it conspiracy theory because I'm not co-spiring with nobody to make a statement. So I'll just say a theory. If you don't like Angel Reese, keep that shit to yourself and don't come to the page, bro. But while I'm over here, I'm going to talk about Angel Reese. I'm going to talk, talk about La Caitlin because that's who she is, is La Caitlin. I'm going to talk about all these people. I don't care, but it's going to be in a respectable sense. She went out here. They were projected to be 12th. 12th. You guys said Angel wouldn't be drafted, that she would be picked in the second round or not picked at all. Y'all said she was when she got selected. Y'all said that she would get cut and become an OnlyFans model. She proved you wrong on both accounts. You guys said she wasn't going to start. Y'all said she was going to be a bench warmer. Proved you wrong again. You guys said this team was going to be trash. They weren't going to go nowhere. In the AFC, win the night and win a couple more games, they're in the playoffs. She's had the best plus or minus rating of anybody on the team. She's been the only starter Throughout the season and this game to start and play in every damn game. And shout out to Aaliyah Edwards. Aaliyah Edwards put a tweet out there saying, Reese, you balled out this year and I hope you get better, get, get better and come back stronger, girly. She has fans within her own within her own draft class. Even at the All-Star game, everybody gravitated towards her. Everybody talked about mentoring her, helping her. Does that sound like somebody bad? She has gone out here, bruh, and actually broke records. Records. And in this game, her defense on Hamby, on Lee Yuru, um, Ray Bullard, Rakia Jackson, her ability to switch on the guards... Made it easier for Lindsay to go off, for Michaela to go off, <gasps> excuse me, for Kendall to go off. Kendall came back and, and played that point guard position like it was nobody's business. She was moving the ball. She was getting the ball to everybody. She was scoring. She was sharing. And she did a damn good job of sharing. So for you, for, for people to say that she doesn't mean nothing, that the team don't need her, the, the team's going to miss her 13 to 15, sometimes 20 boards a game. They're going to miss her putbacks. They're going to miss what she brought to the table. She wasn't just, she wasn't just um, a basketball player. She's a businesswoman. You know, she's doing things that people still ain't done and they in their 50s or 60s. So shout out to you, Scott Tom Barbie. We're supporting you. We're still going to push for the Chicago Scott to make the playoffs, and you're going to be on the sideline. I know you're going to be the biggest cheerleader. You've always been that. 
I know who you are because I followed you since high school. None of these guys know who you are because they just started following you. So keep on playing your thing, doing your thing and stuff. Um, if you wanted got hurt, I still think you would have won rookie of the year. I still think she's rookie of the year. She would have had over third. She would have had over 29 double doubles. Plus, she would have had more rebounds. Plus, she would have been setting even more records. Defensively, she's been great. Rebounding, she's been great. Passing for a big, averaging almost two two assists a game or three. That's that's nasty work for a bit for a four. So, shout out to you, um, the Sparks, Rakia. Keep your head up. Um, Kurt Miller needs to be let go. He put Zaya Cook in the game, but put her in too late. It was already done. The momentum was already swung. Everybody was eating. Ken Dahl dropped her 15, almost had a double-double with nine boards and could have got a triple-double with just seven assists, could have pushed more, but she just played and did what she had to do. But shout-out to Ken Dahl. I'm glad she's back. Um, the Sparks, they're just going to finish out the season, do the best they can. They'll be in the lottery. They'll be able to pick a better pick for this season coming up, and they're going to be back in contention. Um, I think the Sparks next year are going to be in the first top five. They're going to be in the top five or top eight. Watch what I tell you. Um, Rakia is going to have an off season. She's going to be an unrivaled with Angel. They're going to come back even better. So shout out to them, man. Like for real, the Sparks, they tried their best, but they just don't match up well with the Sky. The Sky just played them great. But everybody else, the the the, the um, Sparks can play. But for some reason against the Sky, they have trouble. Um, Camilla dominated down low, getting some buckets here and there. Um, Ken Dog, you know when Ken Folk come back, you know what it is. Ken Folk just changed the whole dynamic of the team. Her and Angel on the floor together is probably the highest plus or minus damn near of anybody. So... Shout out to my few, my rookie of the year. Even though she's not going to win it, you're still my rookie of the year. Don't care what anybody say. Um, shout out to you, Angel. Come back stronger. Um, Chicago Sky looked good. Hopefully they can carry that momentum into um, today's game. So thank you all for listening. Let me know what you guys think about um, the comment section about the Las Vegas Aces and Sun. I still think the Vegas Aces are champions. I think they can still win it, and I think they're still better than everybody. Um, I think the Lynx and the Liberty would give them the most trouble, but we'll see down the stretch. Um, shout out to the Sparks. Rakia Jackson's coming into her own. She continues on this trajectory. She's going to be a problem. Um, I hope they let Zaya, Co Zaya Cook go so she can play on somebody else's team. De'Erica Hamby's going to be straight. Um, Ray Bullard's going to be straight. When Cam Brink comes back, De'Erica could get back to her natural position, which is the four. And Lee Yaru will be a, 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 a solid backup. A solid backup. So thank you guys, man, for listening. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe. You share this. Hit that notification bell to select all to receive upcoming notifications. And if y'all love what you hear, donate to the page by going to the description box, hitting that link to my cash app. Or if you got a Zelle account, you can look at where how you can cash at me at Zelle. Go to the app and find me that way and you can donate. You guys can also super chat or after the video's done, you can leave a super thanks. Okay, so thank you guys for listening, man. Um, I am out. Dizzy.